Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. The summer's gone and all the leaves are falling. Tis you, tis you must go and I must bide. But come ye back when summer's in the meadow. Oh, when the valley's hushed and white with snow, tis I'll be here in sunshine or in shadow. Oh, Danny boy, oh, Danny boy, I love you so. But when you come and all the flowers are dying, if I am dead as dead I well may be, you'll come and find the place where I am lying, and kneel and say, and of it there for me. And I shall hear those soft you thread above me. And all my grave shall warmer, sweeter be. And you will bend and tell me that you love me. And I shall sleep in peace until you come to me. Good morning, everyone, and you're all very welcome as we gather for this funeral mass, or the mass in memory of John McCoy. As you know, his funeral took place in uh, Christchurch, New Zealand, last month. So we welcome him home, home to his native parish, and to family and friends, and all of you who have called here there today to join in offering this holy mass for the happy repose of his soul. If you kindly be seated for a few moments. May Christ, who was crucified for your sake, John, free you from torments. May Christ, who died for you, deliver you from eternal death. May Christ, the Son of the living God, set you down in the fresh beauty of his paradise. And may he, the Good Shepherd, claim you as one of his flock. May he forgive you all your sins and grant you a place among the elect at his own right hand. There may you ever behold your Redeemer face to face and stand before him, enraptured by the beauty of truth itself. And placed in the ranks of the blessed, may you delight in the vision of God forever and ever. Amen. So the family members will bring some symbols of John's life and place them on the little table here before the altar.
We have Liam. Liam has taken up CDs of John's favourite bands, representing his love for music. We have Shane. Shane has taken up the Irish and New Zealand flag, representing his love of both countries. We have Emma and Kathleen bringing a fire engine from John's childhood and orange glasses representing his fun and his wicked humour. And finally, we have Mark. Mark is John's Crusaders jersey, and of course, his Man United jersey, representing his love for sport, and particular rugby and football. Thank you all very much indeed for those symbols representing the very full life that John lived. And I invite you to stand now and we pray together in our Mass for the happy repose of his soul and pray God's comfort and consolation on his wife and sons and family and extended family and all you, his many friends, here to pray with them and to pray for them. The beautiful little brochure that is prepared for the funeral service here today you can follow the Mass in that booklet and join in the responses. So we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves now to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son, who died on the cross, was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery your servant John, who has, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of your resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. We sit now and we listen to the readings of the Word of God. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. 
a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time to war and a time for peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response. You who dwell in the shelter of the Lord, who abide in his shadow for life, say to the Lord, my refuge, my rock in whom I trust, and he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. For to his angels he has given a command To guard you in all of your ways Upon their hands they will bear you up Lest you dash your foot against a stone And he will raise you up on the eagle's wings Bear you on the breath of dawn Make you to shine like the sun And hold you in the palm of his hand And hold you, hold you in the palm of his hand The response story or psalm is, the Lord is my shepherd, and the response is, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gave me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me in all days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children, and that is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is to be revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shine, alleluia, shine, alleluia, shine, alleluia, shine, alleluia, shine, alleluia. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. Shine, alleluia, shine, alleluia, shine, alleluia, shine, alleluia, shine, alleluia. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, so some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. And Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into this world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, dear friends, once more, on behalf of Father Stefano and all our people in the parish here, to warmly welcome John's family, his wife and his sons, uh, his beloved Patsy and Dimpna, and he was a caring brother to uh, Hubert, and uh, who is deceased also, and to Joseph and Marie and Brenda, Brida and Vinnie and Aidan and Kathleen. But above all, we extend our sincere sympathy to his loving wife and to his two sons. At the beginning of Mass, the family lit a number of candles there beside John's ashes, and they are beside the Paschal candle. The Paschal candle, as you know, is lit here on Holy Saturday night at the Easter Vigil, and is a very simple but very significant gesture. It lights the darkened church and carried into the darkened church because it symbolizes the resurrection of Jesus. Christ is truly risen, alleluia, alleluia. The churches around the world sing out that news of great joy, that death does not have the final word. Death has no victory over those who believe. And in the readings of the Word of God, we are told in the first reading that there is a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. None of us know the day or the hour when the Lord will call us and tell us, Come, good and faithful servant, come and take possession of that place I have prepared for you. But in the meantime, we stand ready. We live our life to the best of our abilities. We use the talents and the gifts that God has given to each of us. And in the second reading, St. John reminds us to constantly think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children, for that is what we are. And the world refuses to acknowledge the Lord, but we do. And so in the Gospel we hear Jesus asking, Do you believe this? And she said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into this world. John McCoy was raised in a good family here, brought up in the faith, and he certainly too could answer that question, Yes, Lord, I believe. He believed that Jesus was his Lord and Saviour. Jesus was his way, his truth, and his life. And he was, as you know, a man who was indeed a beacon of light in the lives of so many. In his professional life as a nurse and carer, he brought that light of hope and care and love and protection to those who were ill. In his life as a friend and family member growing up in the parish here, a good brother, a good son, a good neighbor, and a good friend, so many. And then to his beloved wife and to his two sons, he was a devoted father and husband, and they were the whole world to him. So he will be remembered for that 
joy and laughter that he shared with so many, remembered for his great kindness, his wit and his love of his native land here, Ireland, and for his passion for sport, all of that represented in the symbols that the family carried and placed before God's altar here this morning, symbolizing the life that John lived well and to the full. And we believe that if we live our lives well, reaching out in loving care and kindness for family, for the wider family of our parish and community, and showing that love and respect and care and bringing joy and laughter into one another's lives, then we have no fear of death or judgment because we believe that a life well lived comes to completion. It comes to fulfillment. Death is not the end for us who are gathered here this morning in faith. We know it is but the doorway to eternal life. And we know that John lived his life to the full, followed Christ closely, and his family meant the world to him. So we pray for God's mercy on John, the happy repose of his soul. We pray for God's comfort and consolation to his family, his wider family, his many friends and relations, both at home and abroad. We ask God to give them that light and comfort that will enable them to bear the pain of parting, for death does indeed put that sadness and parting into our hearts, but our faith and our belief in the risen Lord assures us that death is not the end, but, as I say, merely the doorway to eternal life, to that place of light, happiness and peace that we call heaven. So we entrust John to that loving mercy and kindness of our risen Lord and Saviour, and we know that he has heard those words now. Well done, John, good and faithful servant. Come now and take your rest in that place which I have prepared for you since the foundation of the world. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen invite those who are leading the prayers of the faithful to come forward now, please. In confidence we approach the throne of God's grace, that we shall have mercy from him and find grace when we are in need of his help. We pray for those who care for the sick and housebound. We give thanks for the skills and the commitment of doctors, nurses and carers. May they continue to reflect the compassion and healing of God who is made known to us in Christ. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who mourn. May their tears be wiped away and may their mourning be turned into joy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember and pray for those who do not have access to basic health care, adequate food or shelter. Uh, we give thanks for our blessings and pray the ways of justice and peace may prevail throughout the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for John. May God receive him kindly with generosity and forgiveness and the rewards of his faith. May he continue to inspire us, to intercede for us and be there at the end to welcome us in our turn into eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for the love which John showed during his life. May he know the perfection and fulfillment of that love in heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, you are the life and the enemy of death. Rescue us and the faithful departed from eternal darkness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray especially in our Mass too for his late brother Hubert, his parents and all our deceased loved ones, all those who have died recently in our parish and all whose anniversaries occur at this time. Lord, hear us. We pray especially too for Louise and Christian and Luke, 
who have travelled here to Ireland to bring John's remains home. We ask the Lord to comfort them after their long journey. They are among family and friends here now. And they are thinking, I'm sure, of family and friends back home. So we pray the Lord's comfort and consolation on all. Lord, hear us. We ask our Blessed Lady, our Heavenly Mother, to intercede for us all, both now and at the hour of our death, as we pray together. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brother John and all our brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of all their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption as we make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the bread and wine will be carried to the altar to become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, Saviour of the world, in the Holy Eucharist here this morning. In bread we bring you, Lord, our body's labor. In wine we offer you our spirit's grief. We do not ask you, Lord, who is my neighbor, but stand united now, one in belief. Oh, we have gladly heard your word, your holy word, and now in answer, Lord, our gifts we bring. Our selfish hearts make true, our failing faith renew, our lives belong to you, O Lord and King. In our Mass this morning, we pray also for uh, Richard and Rose McCormick and their son Stephen, anniversary at this time. Pray now, our brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant John, we humbly beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful, Lord, life is changed and not ended. And whenever this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. And so with all the angels and the saints we praise you, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Eamon, our Bishop, his assistant Bishop Michael, all the clergy, your religious, and your people everywhere. Remember your servant John, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her blessed spouse, St. Joseph, with the blessed apostles, St. John, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We stand together and pray the words that Jesus, our Redeemer and Savior, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's just take a little moment in silence and pray for that gift of Christ's peace. Peace in our own hearts, in our homes, in our family life and relationships, Peace in the many troubled parts of our world for an end to the madness of war. And peace and comfort and consolation for John's wife and family and all who are mourning the loss of their loved ones. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world of mercy in us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Not there was a single court that David played and that pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, now do you? It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor falls, the major lifts, the battle king composing, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw a bathing on the roof, a beauty and the moonlight overthrew you. She tied you to a kitchen chair. She broke your throne and she cut your hair. And from your lips she drew the hallelujah. 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 Well, maybe there's a God above. As for me, all I've ever learned from love is too hard to shoot somebody who are through you. But it's not a crime that you're here tonight. It's not Sid Bedroom who came to not see the light. It's a cold and it's a very broken hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Well, people I've seen in here before, I know this room and I've walked this floor. You see, I used to live alone before I knew you. And I see your flag on the marble arch. But listen, love, some kind of victory march. Look to cold and it's a broken hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah.
Invite those joining us via the parish webcam to receive Holy Communion spiritually. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother John may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. I invite you to be seated, please, and Caroline will read a reflection for us, and Aidan will say a few words on behalf of the family. Our Uncle John. We had a wonderful uncle, one who never really grew old. His smile was made of sunshine. His heart was solid gold. A unique sense of humour and cheeky grin that was our Uncle John. His long flowing hair that many constantly rocked and not forgetting his Mickey Mouse socks on. He called us all his dinkies. I don't think we knew what it meant, but it was always said with fun and jest. He really was the biggest kid at best. His life was filled with moments, moments sweet and sad, with smiles and sometimes tears, with friendships formed and good times shared, and laughter through the years. John's life well lived is a legacy of joy and pride and pleasure, a loving, lasting memory that will stay in our hearts forever. I know somebody's smiling who's putting us through all of this just now, enjoying it. Gone too soon. Very Reverend Canna Murphy, Louise, Christian, and Luke. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters in laws, nieces and nephews, and the many cousins, and the many friends of John gathered here today and joining us through streaming in New Zealand, in Australia, and in America. The measure of a man's greatness is not the monuments he builds, but the hearts he touches. John's deep appreciation for various cultures allowed him to touch the countless lives and bridge divides with his openness and with his obvious kindness. We gather here today to remember and celebrate, and we do celebrate, the life of John who left us far too soon. Though his time with us was cut short, the impact he made on our lives will forever remain. Born on the 25th of April in 1964, the sixth child of eight born to her parents, Patsy and Dimna, and 45 Sleeve Bray. Siblings, Hubert, rest in peace, Joseph, Marie Breda, Vinnie and Kathleen. A busy household, you could imagine, like many households in the area. The way I saw John growing up in her house reminded me that there are two types of people in the world. John was neither. He had an unwavering commitment to self-improvement and embraced every opportunity to challenge himself and others. As we all know, Mardi learning to ride that red 350 red Suzuki traveling across the Irish countryside between RD and St. Edith's Port Ran on a cold, wet winter's night are etched on our brains. He also was an accredited scuba diving license. Now, I looked up, a scuba diving license identifies you 
As an underwater explorer and an ambassador for the ocean, John was an explorer and John was an ambassador. He inspired us to push our boundaries, to dare us to do new things and better things. His spirit of adventure took him to far off lands, exploring the world and immersing himself in different cultures. But right from the start, he dared us all. John and I borrowed our father's car. Nothing unusual about that, you might think. But when you consider that one of us was 15 and the other was 13, it adds a whole new meaning to what I'm about to say. It was a sunny summer day on Stony Lane. A Stony Lane many years ago, very different place. With the car cruising down the road, we were feeling like true adventurers. We embraced the freedom and, dare I say, irresponsibility that comes with being behind the wheel. But just when we thought we'd conquer the world, fate decided to intervene. As luck would have it, right at the end of our journey, parking the car, forced tiny stones in the front of the house in Sleeve Bray to cover our tracks. The key broke in the ignition. Panic ensued as we realized the gravity of the situation. The room fell into an eerie silence as I stood in front of my father. Eyes looked forward and he posed the question, who broke the key in the ignition? As I prepared to defend myself, a strange realization came upon me. Throughout the entire conversation, John had been pointing at me. His mischievous grin barely concealed. John's honesty knew no bound. He moved to Sydney, Australia and worked in North Shore Hospital. Later, both he and Louise moved to Christchurch, where they built a beautiful, lovely home to raise a family with Christian and Luke, surviving in 2011 the terrible earthquakes there. John always held his family close to his heart. He knew the value of cherishing those he loved and made it a priority to create beautiful memories and strengthen the bonds that held them together. His dedication and devotion were unwavering and his presence brought joy and warmth to everyone there. Their home at 24 Canine Place was host to many a barbecue, wel welcoming all in his smile and a cade mila falcha, a kiora, a very strong Maori welcome. One couldn't help mention our John without acknowledging his infectious sense of humour. His quick wit and laughter were a balm to our souls, lighting up the room with his contagious laughter, his passion for sports, his memory of who scored what, where and when, his eclectic taste in 70s, 80s and, dare I say, 90s music, his love of 80s television soap operas, a country practice being a prime example, only went some way to defining his tastes. There is a beautiful... There's a beautiful phrase in Spanish. Nacido con el pan debajo del brazo. One is born with a loaf of bread tucked under one's arm. It's about a person who's born to give and to share with others. John's kindness and generosity is well known amongst all of us here today and those looking in on different continents. John's philosophy is well, well echoed in the words of Antoine de Saint-Exupéry in The Little Prince. It is only with the heart that one can see rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye where John saw you for who you were and not how you looked. He had an amar and a remarkable ability to find humour in even the darkest of situations, reminding us that laughter is truly the best medicine. Talking later life about childhood memory TV programmes and how we watched the Waltons growing up in the 70s, we somehow got to the idea that it must have been very difficult living a life on the fringe of economic survival. John paused and then said, what are we talking about? We were the Waltons of Sleeve Bray. <laughs> John laughed with you. He never laughed at you. He enjoyed the daring nature that life offered us all. Many years ago, as teenagers attending our late brother Huey's wedding to Mary, standing in the church grounds, we spied a very large bell at ground level. John and I said, John said to me, I bet you wouldn't ring the bell, Eden. Easy to ring a bell, I thought. What wasn't easy, I realized, was to stop the bell ringing. We ended up departing the church grounds and ended up at the wedding reception, pretending not to understand why many people were querying the number of bells that were ringing in the church. John possessed an admirable loyalty and a gift for keeping confidences. 
his trustworthiness and steadfastness were qualities that endeared him to all who had the privilege, had the privilege of knowing him. While he had a lighter side, he also carried a profound sense of responsibility and reflective nature. He understood the gravity of life's challenges and approached them with thoughtfulness and resilience. In his presence, one could find solace and wisdom as he navigated his own journey with grace and with courage. And even in the face of illness, during his final years, he never complained. He refused to let it define or dampen his spirits. Instead, he continued to live life to the fullest, appreciating every moment and refusing to let his circumstances hinder his zest for life. He taught us the importance of resilience and the power of a positive, of a, um, a positive mindset. John's compassion had no bounds. He touched the lives of those around him with kindness and with understanding. His empathy and genuine care for others were felt deeply, leaving an indelible mark on our hearts. He reminded us of the profound impact a single person can have on the lives of others. 41 years later, we ended up in the same church grounds, attending Anissa's wedding, the same place, the same bell, that same look on John's face. We got so close, but common sense prevailed. We eventually agreed that scaling a wall as part of our getaway was not appropriate of two professionals, certainly not for two 50-something-year-olds. Today, as we say our goodbyes, let us carry his memory with us. Let us honor his leg legacy by embracing life with the same enthusiasm, love, and compassion that he exemplified. Though he may be physically absent, his spirit will forever guide us, inspiring us to make the most of each day and to live with gratitude and to live with joy. John, you were taken from us far too soon, but your influence on our lives will remain forever. May you find eternal peace and may your journey and your daring continue in the realms beyond our reach. Thank you for gracing our lives and your presence and for reminding us of the preciousness of every single moment. John, you'll be deeply missed. Thank you. Now we have the prayers of commendation. To you, Lord, we commend the soul of John, your servant, in the sight of this world. He is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he may have committed through human weakness, <coughs> and in your goodness, grant him everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So now our seminarian, Davis, will sprinkle John's ashes with the holy water, calling to mind the day of his baptism and the gift of eternal life he received in that sacrament. And incense as mortal remains, reminding us our bodies are the temples of God's Holy Spirit. Saints of God, come to his aid, hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May the angels lead you into the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High.
Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother John in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings which you have bestowed upon John in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with all the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant John and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of our faith until we all meet in Christ and are with our brother John forever. May the angels lead him into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome him and take him to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome him where Lazarus is poor no longer. May he find eternal rest. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Come down upon all gathered here and remain with us forever. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother John to his place of rest in Balapusta Cemetery. Oh, if you need 